Managing real estate investments entails many difficult decisions. Do I pay it now or later? What about the landscaping? Can we afford it? What about taxes? Ink, size, waste, overhead, and don't forget the shipping cost. Estimating a printing job is not so easy. Bad weather, late deliveries, construction delays of all kinds. How is it going to affect our schedule? Now we can find that out, fast. Just as in the past, the Industrial Revolution, electricity, the automobile, and the airplane changed life in America, so today the computer is changing our world. The way we do business, the way we travel, the way we communicate with each other. More and more computer technology is at work in home and factory, education and science, government and agriculture. In the past, we never knew when and how much to water our corn. But with the information from the computer, we now know. We find that we've been saving at least 20 to 30 percent of our fuel and water. The computer age is still relatively in its infancy as experiments develop new applications and techniques. In the marketplace, coded markings, scanned and registered by the computer, serve the consumer with a fast, accurate record of all purchases. You see what you're getting, and you know what you got. Computers design patterns in knitting mills and accelerate development in many other industries. From garment manufacturing to baking, from steel mills to transportation, increasingly sophisticated computers help us to cope with the complexity of our 20th century economy. All right, you guys, we got this hot shipment for Alaska. We got to get on that trailer and get it out of here. A worldwide production and distribution network dependent on fast, accurate information provided by the computer. Today's busy air travel would be impossible without computers to program seat availability, schedules, plane maintenance, and most important of all, the flow of airport traffic. Still another use. An airplane designer sketches on a computer display console with a light pen. The equations represent an airplane's flight characteristics. Such simulations save enormous amounts of time and money. America's space program required a vast network of communications links feeding information to elaborate computer centers. Literally, millions of man-hours of technical research were stored for immediate access. The need for the technology created the technology. IBM's vice president and chief scientist, Dr. Lewis Branscombe. Something referred to as technology has made this possible. But technology doesn't happen spontaneously. It's generated by people responding to business and social needs who look to science for new capabilities. Some technologies like the computer, develop in tune with our needs and perform in very dramatic ways. In just two decades, the speed of computers has improved over a hundred times. Within the half second before the spilled coffee upper right reaches the floor, an average sized computer can perform about half a million separate instructions, or inventory 50,000 individual items in a supermarket, or compute the bank balances of 1,000 people for an entire year. It would take all of the residents in a city the size of New York using hand calculators and working in harmony to keep up with the speed of today's average sized computer. The computer technology has come a long way since this wall-to-wall -wall giant was developed in the 1950s. The maze of circuitry it needed to operate could be replaced today by these few circuit chips. Greater miniaturization and innovative new techniques are dramatically increasing the speed and memory capability of computers. And lower costs are making them available for an even greater variety of applications. In some areas, fire departments also are using computers. En route, firefighting units receive, by radio, computer stored information on the building that is ablaze the nearest working hydrant, and whether children, 
invalids or elderly people live inside. In civil emergencies, authorities can determine how and where to assign casualties. They can get an instant reading on available medical facilities and hospital personnel. More routinely, computers are helping deliver better medical care by keeping accurate patient records and monitoring basic hospital research, tests, and services. Computers are used in more sophisticated ways in law enforcement and traffic control. Monitoring air and water pollution. And regulating the flow of energy from power plants. Newspapers, magazines, television, radio are becoming increasingly computerized. In printing, a computer used in photocomposition is cheaper, faster, and easier to operate in setting type. In construction work, architecture, and engineering, imagination and computer technology are working in tandem. City planners and architects use computer graphics display terminals in making aesthetic judgments, altering blueprints, studying, creating. Tokyo, New York, Los Angeles, London. Skylines around the world are changing as if under the magic spell of a modern-day Aladdin's lamp. Computers, with their capacity to store and retrieve facts and project them in any desired sequence, have immeasurably advanced our ability to analyze and program economic and social development. By helping us gain an understanding of our increasingly complex society, computers are making our complexity predictable, manageable. For the next couple of days, we're going to be simulating events that will be happening in typical American communities throughout the country over the next few years. You've all been given roles in this mythical community. Your role in Apex will be that as the executive director of the Apex Council of Governments. Oh my goodness. <laughs> City planner, the solid waste manager. In this workshop exercise, a computer provides the data needed to visualize a make-believe community and to train its leaders to make decisions based on facts as well as convictions. You've got to get the information and the data quickly. You've got to get it in a short period of time. You've got to analyze it. You've got to understand it. You've got to figure out your decisions quickly. To know exactly where you're going to put a hospital, an airport. We've got to decide what we're going to do with our grant money. The facts, the decisions, the votes fed into the computer create a new community representative of its people. The 208 plan has been passed by all governments. Members of Congress are turning more and more to computers in carrying out their constitutional duties as servants of the people. The Constitution gives Congress the responsibility of overseeing the executive branch of government. Our budget each year is about one billion dollars. The executive branch each year spends about 500 billion dollars. We found this uh, difference in resources to make it very difficult to adequately keep up with what they're doing. For that reason, the electronic computer has become an invaluable aid of the Congress to do its constitutional duty of keeping track of where the nation's tax dollars are actually being spent. Representative Charles Rose of North Carolina is one of the congressmen using computer terminals in their offices to cope with the information explosion on Capitol Hill. Computers are a relatively new tool for the Congress. And not all members of the House of Representatives have uh, rushed out to buy one or to lease one for their offices. We are finding that the younger and the newer members of the House uh, especially believe that computers can be useful to help them be more efficient representatives of their people. 
But what we find is that to get the most advantage out of computers, you have to learn a lot about them, how to program them, so that you actually run the machine instead of having the machine run you. Computer services in the House of Representatives include the new electronic voting system, as well as financial management, internal audits, and an elaborate legislative tracking system that each night updates all committee activities, as well as all action in the House and Senate. Okay, H.R. 13511 is the Revenue Act. So the bill status system is available to all congressional staff offices, the media, and the general public. Congressmen also have online access to the huge data bank of the Library of Congress. Also being developed is a computerized information system about federal government receipts and expenditures for analysis by Congress and the public. Hello. Come on, Brick. I'm what's the matter with you? Can't you do anything right? Yes, sir! In the military, computers have proven to be effective educational tools, especially in teaching procedural and technical skills. Looking good, Brick Hyer. Yes, sir. In education, the computer revolution is having a profound effect. Colleges are making computer science a required course for freshmen, and younger kids are starting early. It's very rewarding. It really is. It's very rewarding to be accomplishing something and knowing that the kids really enjoy it. They're waiting to get on a computer terminal before school starts. Computers will never substitute for dedicated teachers, but they are being recognized as valuable teaching aids in learn and repeat drills, multiple choice tests, and recording student progress. The value of computer technology in the classroom is endorsed by leading educators. And most of the grades, the children made uh, very close, in some cases exceeding, two months growth for every month that they were in the program. Uh, now that's highly significant. We've never seen figures like that before. Computer-assisted instruction presents him with a problem, he gives an answer, it gives him immediate feedback. And if it says that's right, he knows that he did it. It makes you think more and uh, gets you prepared for life. Computers in our lives. We regard them with a sense of wonder and perhaps some misgivings. But they promise to make the future even more interesting and rewarding than the present.